Well, Israel is best known as home to some of the world's holiest places and a pilgrimage destination for Jews, Christians and Muslims. But beneath the conflict and religious significance, it offers visitors vast natural landscapes, buzzing cities and deeply rich culture and cuisine. Travel writer Nina Karnikowski visited recently and joins us now to tell us all about it. Nina, great to see you there today. Um, tell us what you made of it, what you found most fascinating about Israel and wh whether it was somewhat different to what you were expecting. Hi, Leanne. Well, yes, it was absolutely so different to what I was expecting. As you say, you often hear these bad news stories from this part of the world, but there is just so much more to see there. And I'm so glad I got there because I just, it's one of my favourite destinations now. I mean, we started in Jerusalem, which is obviously all about the pilgrimage sites usually, but it's actually got the most incredible food scene there too. We went out into the Judean plain areas around there and we learnt how to make sourdough and visited little goat farms and the first buffalo dairy in Israel, a tiny craft brewery because the craft brew scene there is just going off at the moment. After that, we went down past the Dead Sea because obviously you need to have your Dead Sea float there, <laughs> lowest point on Earth, and then made our way through to the Negev Desert where you really get that otherworldly, you know, the biscuit-coloured landscape. You feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. And yet it's also an incredible food bowl there too. There are all these little farms and vineyards. We stayed on one of them called Kame Avdat Farm and uh, went and had dinner at a local's house. It was really a very cool experience. And, of course, in the Negev Desert you have the Maktesh Ramon, which is the biggest erosion crater in the world. So it's kind of like Israel version of the Grand Canyon yes. and then after the Negev we went back up north to now which is my favorite city in the world Tel Aviv I mean that is truly a city that never sleeps we partied there until 2 30 in the morning and the guy who took us out thought that we were nanas for going home at that time because <laughs> that's when it all really heads off there and you've got the awesome surf culture you've got these old renovated neighborhoods that um you know have all the boutique the boutiques and the cool little restaurants and bars in them and i mean the people there really i guess because it's such a volatile part of the world they have that real live for the moment mentality and it's you know the start one of the startup capitals of the world after silicon valley and stockholm so there's a lot happening there and then, of course, further north, you have Akko, which is this Mediterranean port town, but also has a big Arab community. So you have all the minarets, but then the beautiful stone and the sea. And you have 12th century crusader tunnels going underneath the whole city. So that was really, really cool, too. Totally blew my mind, all of it. Yeah, it all sounds um, it all sounds amazing. And right at the, the, the beginning, you, you mentioned, obviously, you know, the... Um, I suppose the expectation with the conflict and the religious significance and, um, you know, all of that. But I'm just wondering whether you actually felt safe when you were, when you were travelling around all these amazing places. Absolutely. And look, this was the question that most people asked me before I went, oh, is it safe to go there? And of mm. course, you keep your eye on the travel warnings. It is a volatile part of the world, particularly I went way up north to um, a town called Safed, and that's right near, went to Mount Bental, which looks over into the Syrian border. So those sorts of areas you have to keep your eye on. But the rest of the country, I felt completely safe. And there is a big military presence, obviously, in Jerusalem with the things that go on there. But um, as I say, you keep your eye on things and uh, you really just have to get there to experience it all. And obviously also I went to the West Bank, which I think is a must do for anyone going to Israel to see the Palestinian side of the story and, you know, to see the separation wall and to see um, those uh, refugee camps now that have been there for over 70 years. Um, and that's a really important thing to see, and I felt incredibly safe there as well, which was a real surprise to me. And, of course, got to stay in the Banksy Hotel there, the walled-off hotel, which I had heard so much about. Obviously, an art hotel with all of Banksy's works there, but a really great museum there as well so that you can understand the conflict better. And I came away just with such an education from there. Um, Nina, you've mentioned, obviously, all these wonderful places up north and the south and now to the, to the west. How easy was it to actually get around oh my gosh this is the thing it's so easy because this country is 367 times 
smaller than Australia, would you believe? So it takes about five hours to get from the top to the bottom. You can either hire a driver or rent a car. I did both, and I mean, driving there was so amazing because the highways are kind of like better than anything you would find in Australia or America. And um, the only thing is that the drivers are quite pushy, so you just have to have confidence and ignore the fact that they're beeping at you before the lights have even changed, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it, put it puts it into context as to how big Australia is when you compare it to somewhere like um, Israel. Exactly. Yeah, just before we finish up, um, I mean, you so often think about hummus and tahini and those beautiful, you know, Israeli salads. What was the food like? The food was just incredible. I mean, some of the best that I've had in the world you have... Like in Jerusalem especially, there's a really burgeoning food scene there. There was a restaurant called Eucalyptus there. You know, I mean, it is the hummus and the tahini and all of that, but it is so much more. It's all about the produce in Israel and about doing creative things with it. I mean, all, imagine all of those cultures that have come to play there. Um, you get to experience all of that in the cuisine. And there was another restaurant called Machne Yehuda, which is... Um, a market to table restaurant so there's a uh, market from the same name and they get all their produce from there and it's so hip and buzzing you wouldn't believe and, the, and my final restaurant recommendation is called Uri Buri in Akko which is a seafood restaurant worth traveling across the world for the guy who runs it uses no more than eight ingredients in any one dish and you will not believe what he creates with that oh my goodness it sounds incredible I think yeah. by the sounds of it I I think we could probably talk to you for hours about this, oh, Nina. I could just go on and on. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up there, but it's been really wonderful having you on. Thank you so much for taking Thanks us through for all of that. Thanks for having me.